He lost both legs below the knee, protecting our country from the front lines in Afghanistan. But that's not stopping him from protecting us here at home. No, it's not. Matthias Rara just graduated the Suffolk County Police Academy in New York, becoming the first, the country's first full time double amputee cop. Joining us now with his heroic story, newly minted police officer, Matthias Ferreira. Nice to see you this morning. And congratulations. And thank congratulations, you. and thank you for your service to our country. It's an unbelievable story. Take me back to 2011 when this all happened. So I was a uh, machine gunner attached to 1st Battalion, 8th Marine, 2nd Marine Division out of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And uh, we were doing OEF, which is Operation During Freedom. Uh, we were deployed to Helmand Providence uh, and basically trying to win the hearts and minds of the people and uh, basically there to help out and eliminate any threat of Taliban forces. Um, on a night of January 21st, 2011, we were doing a uh, night op, which is basically going inside of the compound and making sure that there were no uh, combatants there or any type of IED making materials. Um, upon going inside of the compound, everything was cleared. We were setting up to basically stay there overnight and begin the missions the next day. Um, I was on a rooftop with the rest of my machine gunners, and we were just setting up the gear. And I said that I'd be back, that I was going to go get the rest of the stuff. And when I jumped off the uh, roof, I landed on a 30-pound bomb. Um, upon the bomb going off, um, both my legs were amputated below the knees, and I had a broken pelvis and shattered femur. Um, and thank God, you know, my doc, uh, Tommy Casey was there, my CO was there, everybody was very supportive, uh, very professional. Everybody was able to stop the bleeding until the medevac got there. And once the medevac got, medevac got there, um, I was able to, you know, basically start responding. And you were taken to Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, how long was the, your uh, recovery process? So the recovery process, uh, I would say, was about a year time lapse from beginning to end. Um, but um, from Germany to Wall Street Army Medical Center, you know, I don't remember too much from there. Uh, it was just remembering waking up in Washington, D.C., and um, basically start uh, recovering from the wounds and, and walking. You, at three months, it took you to start walking, which is amazing. Is. Why, why, being, uh, why, why the police department? So the police department and the military are very similar in many different things. We have the, um, the knowledge of, you know, basically learning both, both traits, except in the military you're just uh, taught to follow directions, follow instructions, and um, basically the police department is something along those lines, except you're released to become a police officer on your own. You have to make uh, very important decisions on your own. But you and wanted to yeah. do this since you were a kid. I did. I, I wanted to do this when I was a kid. Uh, when I moved to the United States uh, from a small country in, in Uruguay in South America, I, I noticed a you know, man in uniform, in a United States Marine Corps uniform, and I told my dad that I was like, wow, I wanted to, I'm going to be that guy when I grow up. And uh, my dad told me what it stood for, you know, fighting for the freedom of this country and giving us the liberties that we have. Um, and, you know, the police department and the military being so similar, I said, if one doesn't work out, then the other one will. It's incredible. Nothing has stopped you from wanting to serve this country. As I mentioned earlier, the, the first double amputee, right, from the Suffolk County Suffolk area. County. Yes, ma'am. I mean, that's incredible in and of itself. And we were talking in the commercial break when you first mentally realized what you had lost, that you had lost both of your legs. What was going through your mind at the time? And what kept pushing you to want to keep fighting, to want to keep giving back in that moment? Well, at the time, it was my family that kept me going, you know, forward. Uh, now I'm married with a, a two-year-old daughter, and um, really, I just want to continue to live my life, to live for them. Um, I know that I would want my daughter to grow up being strong-willed and not letting anything stop her. Um, you know, but my fellow classmates in the police academy and my staff and everybody there was just so supportive that it's really hard to just fail. It's, it's hard to not continue to go on. Well, with so many a lot people of people go. wouldn't. So we, we really commend you this morning. And Suffolk County is a safer place having you on the street. The country is better. I appreciate that, sir. Because and of people like you. Yeah, anyone Very thinks much that much. they've got a tough day, <laughs> you're an inspiration. That's exactly. Thank you so much. Yes. We, we all need to hear your story today. Thank you for having us. I appreciate that. Thank you.